Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, and with all thy soul. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O loving Father, Grant that your church, being gathered by your Holy Spirit, may be dedicated more fully to your service and live united in love according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When we came into Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. Three days later, he called together the local leaders of the Jews. When they had assembled, he said to them, Brothers, though I had done nothing against our people or the customs of our ancestors, yet I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. When they had examined me, the Romans wanted to release me because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to the emperor, even though I had no charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and to speak with you, since it is for the sake of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. He lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 11, verses 4 to 8, which are found on page 596 of the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 11, verses 4 to the end. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold the inhabited world. His piercing eye weighs our worth. The Lord weighs the righteous as well as the wicked, but those who delight in violence he abhors. Upon the wicked he shall rain coals of fire and burning sulfur. A scorching wind shall be their lot. For the Lord is righteous, he delights in righteous deeds, and the just shall see his face. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory be to thee, O Lord. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to him, 
If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. So the rumor spread in the community that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say of him that he would not die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is testifying to these things and has written them, and we knew that his testimony is true. But there are many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is the eve of the Feast of Pentecost. Tomorrow um, is the day when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. It marks a, a point of inflection in the life of the church year and really in the life of the church too. We've been in this strange 10 day period between the Feast of the Ascension when we um, symbolically recognized uh, the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ um, and before we recognize the coming of the Holy Spirit. And it's a sort of a strange in-between time that doesn't actually feel strange or in-between, but on paper, that's, that's kind of what it is. And um, it's strange and in-between, it doesn't feel that way because, of course, when Jesus ascends into heaven and leaves his disciples behind, he does not actually leave his church. He fulfills his promise that he'll be with us always, even to the end of the age, but his presence is made real with us in different ways. Two ways, principally. Well, three ways, principally. Let's be, let me be clear about that. Three principal ways. One, his presence is made, made real with us through his sacramental presence in the Eucharist, so that he's with us even uh, as we break bread and share wine in his name, following his commandment, to do this in remembrance of me. When he said, this is my body, this is my blood, we believe that Christ is really truly present with us through the sacramental gift of his body and his blood. And we in fact believe that that is why he gave us the sacramental gift of his body and blood to be present with us even to the end of the ages, even as he also reigns in heaven at the right hand of God. So there is a strange paradox that Jesus has left us, but is still with us. If you can't deal with paradox, you're going to have trouble being a Christian, which is why you should let me help you deal with paradox. I'll just help you learn how to breathe deeply and, and sort of move through it, and you'll make it. You'll be all right. Aaron had a terrible time with paradox when he first got here, but look at him. He's just fine now. So the first way that Jesus is really present with us is through, the, uh, through his sacramental presence in the Eucharist. The second way that Jesus is really present with us, of course, is through the gathering of his church to become his body, as St. Paul teach us, teaches us, to become the body of Christ in the world, joined together, knit together, so that we can perform Christ's work in the world as his body, his hands, his feet, his voice, his heart, beating in the world. Christ has not left us behind. He is with us when we gather together as one in his name. Where two or three together, I am there in the midst of you, he said. Is that paradoxical? Is it mysterious? Of course it is. Aaron and I are here to help you get over that. He struggled terribly, but look at him now. He's just fine, not even breaking a sweat. The third way that Jesus is really present with us, of course, is through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit's presence does not negate Christ's presence. It facilitates Christ's presence with us. Yes, God is three persons in one, and part of what the mystery of the Trinity means is that we can't slice and dice God to say, oh, he's here as the Spirit now, but as Jesus then, as the Father here, but as the Spirit there. No, we, we identify these gifts of the reality of God in various persons, knowing that when we see these persons at work, when we celebrate the, the presence of, of the Holy Spirit, it's not to say that the Holy Spirit has come to take the place that Jesus once had in our lives. By no means. The Holy Spirit brings with the Spirit the presence of the Spirit of Jesus, the power and the work of Jesus, the ministry of Jesus. 
The Holy Spirit is not disconnected from the presence of Christ on the altar in the sacrament. In fact, we beg the presence of the Holy Spirit every time we celebrate the Eucharist. The Father is not absent somehow remotely in heaven, not able to be with us, not listening to our prayers because he's delegated that work to the Son and to the Spirit. All the Godhead is engaged in this. The fact that we can see pieces of it, one piece here, one piece there, and that God chooses to reveal to us the complexity of God's own being, knowing that we can't understand it, does not mean that God functions as we would function if we had to break ourselves up into three different pieces. And so the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes, does not take the place of Jesus. The Holy Spirit facilitates Jesus' presence among us, even as the Spirit facilitates the Father's presence among us. Even as the Father urges the Son and the Spirit to make all God's being known to us. It's complicated. But look, Aaron's dealing with it just fine, even though it's complicated. And if he can deal with it, right, Aaron? If you can deal with it, you can deal with it too. So here we are in this wonderful time. I have a note about the sermon that I was going to preach. I haven't even got, gotten to it yet. So I think I might leave the note behind and say to you instead that the good news is that that God is with us, that Christ is with us, that Jesus is with us. We celebrate these complexities of God's being with us because we delight in the complexity of Christ. We can delight in the complexity of God's mystery. Your life is complicated. My life is complicated. Many lives are complicated. Even when they seem to be simple, they can be very complicated. And if they're not complicated on the outside, they might be very complicated on the inside. And if your life is as complicated as yours is, imagine how complicated God's life could be. Of course, God's life can also be very simple. It's part of the paradox of God's being. But we delight that God allows us to see some of the complexities of God's own being. And we delight that even when Jesus has left his disciples in the ascension, he has not gone from us. We delight that even before the Spirit gets here, in our own day and age, we benefit from the presence of the Spirit among us. We delight in the way that God works among us, whether, whether through the amazing occurrence of the ascension, or the equally or even more amazing occurrence of the coming of the Holy Spirit, the gift of that Spirit in Pentecost. And we pray that God will help us to be aware of Christ's presence here, that he will help us to understand or at least to accept how it is that we live in the constant presence of God, that God has not left us, Christ has not left us comfortless, he will be with us always, even to the end of the ages. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto the, thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. Grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Dan Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, and Britt, Nora, Stephen, Nicholas, and Gordon, my priest brothers and sisters who worship and work in this place and parish, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. 
and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, the members of the Congress and the courts, Tom, our governor, and Jim, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who are sick with the coronavirus, all doctors, nurses, medical workers, and essential workers of various occupations who put themselves at risk for the well-being and benefit of others, all those who are unemployed or otherwise in financial straits, all those who hunger and thirst for righteousness and who are struggling for justice that's been denied or working to bring about an end to the sin of racism in our hearts and in our society and all those beloved of this parish community who are sick or in need, particularly remembering to pray at this time for Chris, George, Sue, Kent John, George, John, Homer, Mary Jane, Marlene, Marguerite, Kathleen, Lori, Mark, Ira, Will, Judith, Lucas, Henry, Colleen, Jacob, Grace, Nick, Will, Diana, Joan, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially all those who've died from the coronavirus this day, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace, so to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, of blessed Mark the evangelist and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. God has gone up with a shout, and the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at my hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and for that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, after his glorious resurrection, manifestly appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us that where he is there we might also be and reign with him in glory. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts heaven and earth are full of thy glory Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again for in the night in which he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me likewise after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me.
Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which, thou, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this Holy Communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
the body and the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us with these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of an everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.